Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Hollywood. I'm Laron Gubler, President and CEO of the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce, and it's my pleasure to welcome you today to today's Walk of Fame ceremony presented by the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce and the Hollywood Historic Trust. Now, you don't have to be a mentalist to know how loved today's honoree is. And so on this Valentine's Day, we are delighted to honor one of television's most popular actors as he receives the 2,490th star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Today, today Hollywood shows its love for Simon Baker. Now before, before I bring our honoree to the uh, stage, let me tell you a little bit about him. Simon Baker was born in Launceston, Tasmania. But his family then moved to New Guinea, then on to Sydney before finally settling in New South Wales, Australia, where he spent the majority of his youth. And I understand we have a few Aussies here, don't we? All right. He first arrived on American screens in 1997 in Curtis Hansen's critically acclaimed L.A. Confidential. The highly praised film marked the beginning of a career of captivating performances and notable collaborations across the film and television spectrum. Currently starring in the highly su successful Warner Brothers television hit, The Mentalist, <laughs> Simon's, Simon's portrayal of the charming and irreverent Patrick Jane has won him international stardom and earned him Golden Globe, Emmy, and SAG nominations. The highly successful series airs Sundays on CBS and is currently in its fifth season. And that deserves some applause. Now, Simon has worked on the following feature films. And let me know which ones are your favorites. Ride with the Devil. The Killer Inside Me. Land of the Dead with Dennis Hopper. And the international box office hit, The Devil Wears Prada, with Meryl Streep and Anne Hathaway. He has cemented his reputation as both a versatile and charismatic character actor and leading man. He had a starring role in the sequel to the DreamWorks monster hit, The Ring, with Naomi Watts. Let me say that again, with the monster hit, The Ring, with Naomi Watts. All right. Also. The indie Sundance competition favorite, Book of Love. And the inter interracial love story, Something New. Recently, he worked alongside Kevin Spacey and an all-star cast in the critically acclaimed Margin Call. And that has received several awards, including an Academy Award nomination for Best Original Screenplay. He will next be seen in the British comedy, I Give It a Year, with Rose Byrne and Anna Ferris, which is currently opening in the UK to great reviews. Now, throughout his career, Simon has pursued his interest in directing, beginning with an episode of The Guardian, and more recently, several episodes of The Mentalist. He recently joined with an Oscar-winning producer, Mark Johnson, to acquire the Tim Winton novel, Breath, which they plan to adapt and co-produce as a feature film. His philanthropic involvement includes Artists for Peace and Justice, Mending Kids International, and Life Rolls On. Also, he supports Planned Parenthood and the Coalition to Abolish Slavery and Trafficking. And on that note, please help me welcome to the stage our honoree, Simon Baker. Now, I know you all want to hear from Simon, but before he speaks, we have a few uh, guests who have a few words to say on his behalf. Our first speaker today is the creator and executive producer of The Mentalist. In addition to creating the hit show, he is probably best known for the television series Rome, which he co-created. He is currently writing and executive producing the drama pilot, The Advocates, for Warner Brothers Television and CBS. Please welcome Bruno Heller to the stage. Hello, everybody. Thank you. Um, I'm extremely proud and very happy to be here today to honor Simon. Um, 
I've worked with him now for uh, five years, and I can testify that, Mike, nobody on this street deserves this star more than Simon does. What you see on screen is, is an actor of great intelligence and charm and wit and grace and great handsomeness. Um, I think probably the th one thing I will treasure most about doing this series with Simon is seeing the Chancellor of Germany break down and giggle and blush like a schoolgirl on, on, on sight of Simon. Um, that's what he's like on screen, all that charm and wit. Off screen, what you don't see and what I've seen him bring to the set every day for five years is an iron work ethic and the eyes and ears of a real, genuine filmmaker. Um, the first time I met Simon to talk about The Mentalist, he arrived on a bicycle and he pulled the script out of his back pocket, all rolled up and sweaty and dog-eared. And every page of the script was covered in notes and black marks and kind of exclamation marks saying, no, crossing out, underlines. <laughs> now, usually, that's not a good sign. Uh, and I was very apprehensive. Uh, but Simon analyzed that script like an old soldier breaking down a rifle. He made sure all the parts were clean and oiled and working, and then he put it all back together again, just the same as it was, but better. And he made the character of Patrick Jane his own. Um, <laughs> keep moving, everybody. Keep moving. Uh, there's a warmth and ease about the character of Patrick Jane um, that a sort of happy glow about the character that is purely Simon. Um, off screen, working with him day to day, you, you learn to ignore the glow. Um, but the warmth and ease and the generosity of spirit are very real. And I think that's why The Mentalist is a success all over the world. Um, it's also why, after five years, we make the show with pretty much the same cast and crew that we started with. Um, that warmth and ease that people can tell is real. Um, on behalf of that cast and crew that have been together now for five years, um, I just want to say how proud and happy I am and a big congratulations to Simon. You really deserve this. Thank you. Thank you, Bruno. Let me acknowledge a few special guests with us today. We have the chairman of the board of the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce, Mr. Chris Barton from Sunset Gower, Sunset Bronson Studios. We also have with us the chair of the Walk of Fame Committee, Mr. David Green from the Pantages Theater. And we have Simon's co-star with us, Robin Tunney. In addition, we have Peter Roth, the president of Warner Brothers Television. Peter, always glad to have you with us. And we have Jeffrey Schlesinger, president of Warner Brothers International TV. Welcome. As well as Nina Tassler, president of CBS Entertainment. Thank you for coming. We're always delighted to have you with us. Now, our next speaker is an Oscar nominee for Best Actress for her role in the film The Impossible. She has also been seen in many other films, including 21 Grams, J. Edgar, I Heart Huckabees, Mulholland Drive, and The Ring with Simon. She recently shot the highly anticipated biopic Diana, in which she plays the lead role as the iconic Princess Diana. Please welcome Naomi Watts. <laughs> will never understand just how truly difficult it really is to get a star of, of the Walk of Fame. I mean, the heavy lifting, both emotional and physical, it's pretty labor-intensive work. It's really the dirty work, not for the faint of heart. Well, it's work that's sort of fit for um, a bricklayer. And I'm talking about you, Simon. Yes, many of you probably don't know that Simon used to be a bricklayer for a brief moment. And that he parked cars at a beach resort. And 
spent a couple of months flirting with the idea of becoming a nurse while at med medical school. And the only flirting he did there, I'm sure, was... Um, anyway. Um, the truth is, he was really not going to have any of that. His heart was set on becoming an actor. So he had to get the dialect down and uh, get to the US and uh, take on his toughest challenge yet. Like all of the rest of us Aussies who arrived cap in hand to Hollywood, he was just another hopeful. But he worked hard. Those years of heavy lifting really paid off, and he focused that determined energy that I know so well on doing his best and pursuing his dreams. And Simon's dreams, I can say for real, were, the, were of the purest kind. He doesn't have a cynical bone in his body. He wanted to act because he had a real depth and an inner story to tell. But like any rational young man, he had a seed of doubt. So, as always, he turned to Rebecca. What should I do with this seed? Suffice to say, Stella, Claude, and Harry soon <laughs> followed after. I've known Simon for more than 20 years. And I joke about his backstory, his bricklaying days, his attempt at nursing and a few dodgy TV shows back in the day. But when I first met him, I was just struck by his charisma. I'll never forget it. My great friend, Rebecca, told me that she had a new boyfriend. What? This was really going to run some interference with my friendship. I took one look at him. OK, Rebecca, I'll share. You. Well, I'm, come on, I was sure it was going to be fleeting. We were all so young. This was the best looking guy anyone had ever seen and hardly ever seen without a surfboard in his clutches. How and why would a man like that be interested in having a relationship at 22 years old? Well, this is what made Simon different. He wasn't just interested in rolling around in his 20s, oh, rolling through, I mean, sorry. <laughs> Come what may, he wanted everything, and that included a proper marriage and a family, plus the brilliant career, and he made it all happen. So, you really know you've made it when hordes of strangers are crushing you underfoot every day for the rest of eternity. Congratulations, Baker. I am so happy for you. The truth is that if there's anywhere anyone is okay about being crushed underfoot, it's on Hollywood Boulevard with a name in one of those puppies. I'm so honored to be here sharing this, with, this celebration with you. It's seriously, I mean, old mates, they count for a lot. And being here today will cost you quite a few. <laughs> really, this is such a great moment, and I'm so happy to be here with Rebecca and your family, your beautiful family. Here's um, to many more decades of heavy lifting, and congrats on cementing your name in Hollywood Boulevard forever. I love you. Thank you, Naomi. You know, the nice thing, Simon, is you get the last word. <laughs> All right. Hollywood is blessed to have two outstanding council members, uh, Eric Garcetti, in whose district is the Walk of Fame, and Tom LaBonge, who uh, represents the Hollywood sign. So please represent one of our outstanding council, me council members from the 4th Council District, Mr. Tom LaBonge. Thank you very much. Let's give it up to Leron Gouver, all the chamber staff, Hannah. Look at that sign up there. Look at that. Look at the sign, huh? Yeah. The great thing about Hollywood and the ancient Hollywood stands for hope. And when you came to Los Angeles, you had hope that you would become successful as an actor. And you certainly are. And the wonderful impact that you've had, your beautiful family. The great thing about our city, the great thing about Hollywood is diversity and people from near and far, as far away as Australia, come here to be successful for all the Aussies. But I have uh, two things for you. First. Underneath that sign is the Cloistered Order of Nuns, and I see you got two good boys there. This is the greatest bread made by nuns. It's from the Monastery of the Angels, because today you're an angel in the City of Angels. There we go. Thank you. And formerly, you know, 
We have these proclamations. And my colleague, Eric Garcetti, the great member of the City Council, wants you to know, along with our mayor, Antonio Villaraigosa, how special it is for you to be on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. So today, Simon Baker, is your day in Los Angeles, in Hollywood, California, USA. Okay. And on that note, Simon, it's time to hear from you, but let me just say, in memory of our late honorary mayor, Johnny Grant, who ran the Walk of Fame as the uh, chair for 30 years, we hereby declare this Simon Baker Day in Hollywood. And we get to share that with Valentine's Day as well. But, uh, happy Valentine's Day, everyone. Um, Thank you, gentlemen. Well, I mean, what, a, what an introduction. Naomi, Bruna, uh, the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce. Uh, it, it's, it's surreal. It's a, it's a bizarre experience to think that that's going to be down there forever. Um, blows my mind. I can't really get my head around it. But uh, as, a, as a young actor, and like a lot of young actors, I, um, I was filled with self-doubt. The desire was there. You know, I, I, I wanted to be an actor. I, I wanted to connect with people through acting, but uh, I lacked confidence. But I was incredibly fortunate to meet people who believed in me more than I believed in myself. Great people who offered me encouragement, uh, support, and inspiration. And this, this moment right now is as much for them as it is for me. So I obviously want to thank a few of those people. Uh, Jason Weinberg, it's his birthday today. Happy birthday. Uh, Beth Holland Garland, uh, David Koth, all the people at Untitled, they work tirelessly. Uh, such support and guidance. Also Peter Levine, Michael Katcher. Steve Vlashever and everyone at CAA, Ina Tresiokas, who's always got my back, Howard Altman, who makes numbers look funny and charming and sexy. Um, and of course, everyone at Warner Brothers, Peter Roth, who uh, is the most hug-happy executive in Hollywood. I would even go so far as to say he's a serial hugger. Um, he ruined two days of the great holiday I was having in Sydney. Whilst I was on the phone talking to him, he was convincing me to do The Mentalist. Uh, thank you for that, Peter. Uh, I don't know if that phone bill will be paid off until the first year of syndication comes in. But uh, thank you. Without, I wouldn't be here without those phone calls. Um, Melinda Hagee, uh, Rachel Filippella, Holly Ollis, all the staff at Warner Brothers, you've always You've always greeted me with such open arms and been so accommodating. Our relationship has been so strong, and, and I really appreciate that. Uh, CBS, Les Moonves, Nina Tasler, Peter Golden, Rosemary Tarkiri. I, I, met, I met Les Moonves 17 years ago when I came here. Les Moonves took a bet on me then, and he stuck with that bet. And uh, I will forever be indebted to him and, and, and Nina at CBS for that. Which, uh, now obviously I'm not going to be able to mention everyone. There's a lot of people that I, I, you know, I've bumped into that have given me great opportunities. But I, I really want to mention my family at The Mentalist. Uh, Bruno Heller, who, I mean, I, the guy has always encouraged me to follow my instincts. He's always been incredibly supportive. He's treated me like a partner from the beginning. I, I thank you for that. I thank you for, for your honesty, for the enormous amount of faith you had in me and trust you put in me. I don't know why you've spoiled me for anyone else that wants to work with me afterwards. Um, but I, I, I'm really grateful, uh, most of all, for our friendship, a friendship that will, will go, go way beyond the, the last residual check from this show. Uh, I really value that friendship. I mean it. And, 
And uh, Chris Long, who can't be here, he's a solid, reliable, uh, the man you want in the trenches with you, hardworking, talented. Uh, he's directing because the show has to go on. Um, uh, I have a wonderful cast that I, sh that I share every day with. Uh, Tim Kang, Owen Yeoman, Amanda Rigetti, and the delightful Robin Tunney. Yeah. Hey? You make every day a joy to go to work. You do. You make, you make uh, the, the days easier. You make the work better. You make me look a foot taller. I value your friendship so much, Robin. It's been one of the great gifts of this show. Thank you. And then uh, the crew, who really are the unsung heroes always in Hollywood. They work tirelessly. I really admire my crew. I'm a real supporter of the crew. Uh, I, I love spending time with them, and I'm, and I'm very, very grateful. Now, I could go on. There's so many people that are here that have had influence on me, like M Mark Johnson, who I worked with on The Guardian, uh, a Andy Freeman, who was around in the early days and always been very supportive of me. Charles Shires here, you know, uh, I, I did a movie with Charles in Prague and we've been great friends ever since. Uh, my assistant, Matt, who, you know, I pretty much got pretty quick out of film school and he's just been fantastic. My driver, Tim Stansel, who's just like solid. Um, I want to mention something that's very important to me and it's my friends. You will never realize, sorry, how much inspiration you guys give me. You know, I steal from you every day, all your material, I love it, I thank you. Uh, it's, it's a thing that really buoys me and keeps me going is my friendships, you know, like Naomi, from the beginning, you know, we, we sublet her house around the corner and and uh, she's, she's seen it all, and we've, we've, we've taken that path together. Um, there's one friend I want to mention in particular, John Can, who was my agent, uh, my great friend, my mentor, my best man, sometimes my partner in crime. But he was, he was very, very, very instrumental in me and my wife and my daughter actually coming here in the first place. He was adamant that we broaden our horizons, and, and without his encouragement and his support, uh, I, I wouldn't be standing here today, and I definitely wouldn't be the man I am. So, thank you, Johnny. Um, yeah, what am I going to do now? I don't know. I'm winging it from here. Uh, but to wrap it up, look, to me, the big thing is. And, I, and I, this is a great trip. It's fantastic. I could never have imagined, you know, the Hollywood Walk of Fame, to me, was always about inspiration. And I remember walking down here and seeing all these names, and, and I never imagined that my name would be one of those names. I just, it, it didn't even enter my mind. And this is all fantastic, but without being able to share it with my family, my wife, my daughter, the only other place I have my name written in the ground is at Bondi Beach. When my daughter was one year old, I know it's illegal, but I wrote Stella and Simon, 93. She was not even a year old. That's the only other place I have my name written in the ground. My, daughter once, my wife once gave me a card that said, opportunity having knocked moves on. And the most important opportunity that I took advantage of my life was marrying her. Thank you. My kids, my cup runneth over. This is for you guys, you know? You guys inspire me. Thank you very much. All right, it's time to unveil the star.
Fame, Simon Baker.